both Spanish and English. Apart from her facility in the language, her appointment was doubly significant by her being a historian. Incarnation knew the value of primary sources written during the Spanish period, which were useful in the study and writing of Philippine history, and Rizal's works would be one of them. Through her translation efforts, works of Rizal, which were written in Spanish, became accessible to students. With the institution of a Rizal course in college, Incarnation's translation translations became valuable as this enabled students to read results works in English. Apart from what has been earlier mentioned, Incarnacion is credited for translating into English results letters to the women letter to the women of Malolos, results annotations to Morgas events in the Philippine Islands, quotations from results writings, the result blumentary co uh, correspondence, etc. Incarnation became the first president of this Kababaihan Tisadista, where she is pictured here, a, woman's, a women's organization which aimed to propagate the ideas and works of Jose Rizal. She was often invited to talk about Rizal in various fora, and her speeches were proof that made Rizal relevant during her time. She would underscore Rizal's ideas on the importance of education, of discipline, of national unity, and the role of agriculture in the life of the country. Another area which Incarnation lent her intelligence, energy, and time was the women's suffrage movement in the Philippines. Incarnation's early foray to the feminist movement in the Philippines was when she participated in a debate while in high school on the issue whether women should be given the right to vote. She recalled having approached her father asking which side she would choose. Her father's reply was for her to take the affirmative side, since women are human beings too, and as human beings are endowed like men with inalienable rights. Later, she wrote an article entitled, quote, uh, Shall the Filipino Women Vote, which appeared in the Philippine Review of 1919. In this particular article, Incarnation answered point by point arguments raised against the granting of women being given the right to vote. She wrote, and I quote, fatal consequences are, are foreseen by the opponents of women's suffrage. They claim that the ballot will destroy the feminine qualities which are so admirable in our women, that the, that the vote will be neglected, that it will lower men's esteem and respect for her. As to the first argument, the experience of countries where women enjoy political rights can prove its utter fallacy. That the home will be neglected if women are granted suffrage, never. The love of home, of family, is innate in women, and the ballot alone is not sufficient to kill that instinct. That men will lose their esteem and respect for her, such man will have a mistaken notion of the significance of suffrage. Suffrage is a privilege granted by law to deserving citizens. Should we be ashamed of the possession of that privilege? Should we belittle its possessor? Certainly not. The ballot signifies the individual. A person enjoying full political rights deserves greater respect and esteem than a disenfranchised one. Her formal involvement in the women's suffrage movement was uh, when she was elected president of the Philippine Association of University Women. Upon her election in 1929, she made a campaign. Uh, uh, she made a campaign for women's suffrage, a project of the uh, Philippine Association of University Women. Uh, Incarnation did not tire in campaigning for women's suffrage even after her term as president of the association ended. She continued the campaign through her articles. She mentioned in one article that the Philippine legislature was the bulwark of conservatism when it came to crafting a law which would grant women the right to vote. Incarnation wrote, our legislature is surrounded with an apparent impenetrable wall of conservatism. No brilliant array of arguments in favor of women's rights have yet moved them to action. Neither has the example of some 28 civilized nations 
which have enfranchised their women produce any perceptible effect upon it. Its determination to conserve as long as possible men's supremacy in government is unshaken. The opponents of women's suffrage in our parliament have paid in rare moments of inspiration many flattering compliments to Filipino womanhood, but intelligent women demand that the compliments should be more substantial. It in this same article, Incarnation mentioned that Filipino suffragettes were different from their counterparts in other parts of the world, in that they were not wont to use force in working for the right to vote. She wrote, quote, the manifest reluctance of our lawmakers to pass a political reform of this nature has not happily provoked the women to take aggressive action. The remarkable calmness of the Filipino women in the face of these reverses in their struggle for political emancipation is an indication of a great love for peace and orderly procedure in government. The noisy parades, waving of flags, picketing, and kindred methods of exerting pressure on a stubborn lawmaking body do not appeal to them. Our legislature should rejoice that the women of this country are capable of such amazing, amazing patience and endurance which are without parallel in other countries in the world. Uh, Inkara should explain that despite the yearly rebuffs, the women's interest in this uh, goal did not wane. Amidst the campaign for the right to vote, Incarnacion used her craft as a historian to write a book, The Filipino Woman, Her Social, Economic, and Political Status, 1565 to 1933, which documented the progress of the Filipino women in these three areas of endeavor. This book, published in 1934, became a very useful propaganda tool in convincing the Philippine legislature to grant suffrage to the Filipina. The fruits of Incarnacion and other Filipino suffragettes bore fruit when the American Governor General Frank Murphy signed into law a woman's suffrage bill in December 1933. According to the law, the enfranchisement of women was to take effect January 1, 1935. But since a new constitution was drafted, pursuant to the tidings McDuffie Independence Law of 1934, the women's suffrage law was superseded by the Constitution of 1935, which had the following provision on suffrage. Article 5, suffrage may be exercised by the male citizens of the Philippines, not otherwise qualified by law. Provided, however, that the National Assembly extend the right of suffrage to women, if in plebiscite, which shall be held for that purpose, within two years after the adoption of this Constitution, not less than 300,000 women otherwise should vote affirmatively on the question. Pro-suffrage members of the Philippine Assembly vied in sponsoring plebiscite bills until President Manuel Quezon signed a consolidated plebiscite bill on September 30, 1936. According to Commonwealth Act No. 34, every female citizen of the Philippines, 21 years or over, shall have been a resident of the Philippines for one year and of the municipality wherein she proposes to vote for at least six months next preceding the plebiscite and who possesses the qualifications therein specified is entitled to vote in the said plebiscite. The plebiscite day was set on April 13, 1937. 500,000 women registered during the two registration days of April 10 and April 17, 1937. And out of this number, 447,725 uh, women voted yes to the question, are you in favor of granting suffrage to women? And the Spanish translation of the same question was estar usted en favor de la concesión de sofragio a las mujeres. The yes votes vote, uh, exceeded the required 300,000 votes by 147,725. Going back to Encarnacion, the enfranchisement of the Filipino woman was one of the highlights in her life. She worked hard and lived to see the Filipina acquire the right to vote. One would say that she was an indefatigable feminist. 
Her legacy to the Philippines is clearly seen in her intellectual contributions in three areas, history of the Philippines, results life and works, and the feminist movement in the country. In 1934, it was no surprise when she was conferred by President Ferdinand Marcos in 1985 the rank and title of National Scientist. With this highest recognition bestowed on her by her country, Incarnation left this world on March 13, 2001, assured that her many writings, speeches, and translations are her enduring legacy. So I'll end by uh, showing you some of her pictures. So this one, uh, she was addressing the Kababaihan uh, Risalista in 1961. Uh, she was uh, here addressing the insulation of a marker on uh, Olivia Salamanca, who was a uh, American pens uh, American scholar. We called it pensionada uh, at the time, and uh, she she was she studied in the U.S. to become a doctor. So little by little, women were getting the male-dominated professions and medicine was one of them. Okay, this one is, uh, uh, she is in the company of the uh, League of Women Voters in the Philippines. Uh, here she is, uh, sit and in the center is President Ramon Magsaysay, uh, and uh, I, uh, beside the Magsaysay, the right uh, is the wife, Luz, and after Luz, it will be Incarnacion son. This is her uh, attending the uh, UNESCO um, meeting in 1946, right after the war. And as you can see, she was the only woman member of the Philippine delegation. Uh, she always wore the Philippine dress. Okay, this one is in uh, Mexico. Again, she's the only woman uh, in the delegation. Uh, here she is uh, uh, with uh, President Elpidio Quirino, the uh, president after Manuel Rojas, reporting what transpired in the UNESCO uh, meeting. That this I think is uh, again a UNESCO uh, gathering. She was uh, attending the uh, UNESCO meeting for three years, 46 to 49. Okay, uh, again, uh, she was uh, here in uh, attending a UNESCO meeting again. Their uh, picture, she's there uh, again with uh, all the men around her. <laughs> it was so dominated. Uh, this is her picture uh, when she graduated from the University of the Philippines with a bachelor's degree in education, major in history. Another picture of hers. This is a picture of hers as uh, a pensionate in the United States. Okay. Another, uh, this one, she was already a faculty of the Department of uh, History, University of the Philippines. Uh, she, she carried well with the national, it's difficult sometimes uh, using, wearing the national dress, but she did carry the